Hello everybody and welcome out to another Dice Tower Daily Unboxing video. Today we're taking a look at Fighters of the Pacific. This is from Don't Panic Games. I really like that logo a lot. Also Capsicum Games. I like that logo a lot. Game by Frank Garibaldi, illustrated by Alexander Bonvelo and Antoine Schindler. I really like the look of this. I like the theme of this. I played a lot of the uh, Super Nintendo Carrier Aces back in the day. This is a game in which you can relive the fury of air battles in the Pacific during World War II. So, uh, yeah, what do we got here? We got Zeros versus Wildcats and Dauntless and Devastators. Okay. Um, so, let's see. Direct the airplane to multi multiple fighter and bomber squadrons to lead attacks on the enemy's carriers and island bases. No dice, no rulers. Just hexes, baby. Uh, move each airplane individually on the grid. Some have torpedoes and bombs to destroy the ships. I see that. Each airplane has its own attributes in terms of speed, armor, and special abilities. Each piece is illustrated as close as possible to its historic model to maximize your immersion. I, I do like this. So, two players, 14 plus, 120 minutes. That's the only side, that's the only downside of this to me so far is that that sounds long. Maybe the shortest scenario is rules for one to four players. Intriguing. Let's take a look here. Here's the solitaire mode. Oh, that's pretty short, actually. All right, Fight of the Pacific multiplayer mode. Oh, maybe, maybe this this isn't all of the solo rules. Fighters of Europe. Oh, that's cool. Kickstarter 2020. Did this kickstart already? I don't know. Okay, anyway, oh man, I don't know. I, World War II aviation has always, always intrigued me. So you got a scenario book, and you have the rule book here. The rule book is pretty small, actually. That's quite small. Hopefully the rules are actually fairly simple. This is all just set up. Nice, full illustration on the setup. Fantastic. Cannot overemphasize how important this is. You have a picture here illustrating all of the different types of markers and stuff in the game. Beautiful. Turn description. You have the initiative phase. Players determine who has the initiative for the turn. The activation phase. Players activate all their airplanes and anti-airplane batteries, AA. Uh-huh. The end of the turn phase. Compulsory movements are carried out. Reinforcements placed. And the victory conditions are checked. Sounds very simple. I mean, hopefully it really is. Okay. So based, uh, based on a few different factors, here you have... Uh, handicaps points towards your towards your initiative. Then you do the activation. Uh, the player with the initiative begins activations, but can let his opponent play first. Generally speaking, the player with the initiative can always skip his turn. He can therefore let his opponent activate all his AGs. Uh, that's the term. Airplane groups. Uh huh. Got it. Uh, AGs, and then activate all of his own. However, he can only activate one AG at a time and must let his opponent play between two of his activations. Okay, so it's a back and forth, but whoever has the initiative can say, nah, you go for it. So, based on movement points, you have your different maneuvers that you can do. Shooting is kind of done within ranges here, it looks like. Dodging. Uh, when an airplane has not yet been activated, is shot at, it must Dodge and attempt to escape the field of fire of the airplane firing at it. Dodge is compulsory. Movement of one hex, slide or turn, possibly accompanied by a dive if the players wish. A fighter at high altitude, alt altitude can also choose to do a split S. Uh -huh. This would make more sense if we were reading about it. Hoo -hoo. Are there actually smoke tokens? That looks pretty cool. Uh, damage, based on armor value. AA defenses, end of phase turn. Alright, so basically, try not to get shot, is what it sounds like. And here's the scenario book. Alright, whoa, wow, that opening scenario is just have at each other. Good golly, woo! Alright, scenario instructions, this is how it all works, narrative descriptions. Alright, so this kind of explains what the two sides are trying to do. Hey, this is the US side, this is the Japanese side. You have your different squadrons out there. But let's take a look at some of the other scenarios here. Starting at the diagonal, and then maybe some other rules I'm, of course, just blowing through. You start with some damaged planes out here on the map. Interesting. 
This one is called Vengeance, Scenario 4, Attack on the Akagi. This is where you start getting the actual carriers out there, and then you have different rules for uh, winning conditions, I'm guessing, for each scenario, trying to take down the ships, trying to hold them off for a certain number of rounds, maybe. Okay, island tokens that you can put out. Scenario 7, Bombing. Damage Control. Rescue on the high seas. A very distressed looking ship there. Face to face. Maybe this really is just all of the solo rules. This does not look like a terribly complicated game. It just doesn't sound short. You know, the two hour uh, time length is the only thing that kind of worries me about it. But maybe it's just because you start with so many airplanes out there. I think if you kickstarted this, there's an optional play mat that this could also come with. And so, blah, blah, blah. you can see what this looks like. This is uh, six pieces of board. Oh, so it's not tokens, it's actually just different sides of the board that you can set up. That's cool, and was it six of these? Yeah, it looks like six, uh, seven. Cool, I like that. Now let's take a look at the actual pieces here. So you have the Zero, the Val, and the Kate. Here on the Japanese side. Wah, wah, wah. Pop this open. The Wildcat, the Dauntless, and the Devastator. And then you have a couple different of these. I'm not sure. I'm not looking close enough to see if they have like really that big a differences in between them, or maybe there's extras. Or, oh, there's a you can play four player team mode, I'm guessing, team versus team. Sequence of play outlined here. Nice. You can put your uh, uh, you, you put your initiative tokens and stuff out there. Turns. Score track. It looks like victory point board. All right. And then you've got the pieces. And these pieces look really good. I I like this illustration style a lot. Let's see, the question is, can you tell the difference between your planes that easily if you're a lay person like me? Like, I like aviation, I love this theme and everything like that, but just looking at this, I'm not, I mean, those are different planes, right? One is the, um, I think this is the Wildcat, probably? I would probably want a little more visual distinction just for the usability side of things, but I'm intrigued uh, by the game. Oh, yeah, the, the AA explosions up there. Tokens look good. I really like these, uh, I really like the damaged tokens that you can put out onto your planes, the ships and stuff. This looks really cool. So there you go. That is just a nice quick look here at Fighters of the Pacific. Thanks for coming by another Dice Tower daily unboxing video. I hope that you all have yourselves a fantastic day.